Hi. In previous video, we actually saw how the country's uh, production possibility from here is constructed. Before, we also noticed that in a situation where the opportunity cost in Kenya is six, so in order to produce one more unit of chemicals, we need to forego six units of food, and in EU is four, it is possible to have welfare gains associated with the fact that if Kenya starts producing more food, it can exchange it for chemicals with the uh, European Union and as a result, total volume of production increases. But now we need to get into the subject a little bit deeper. Now we're going to discuss terms of trade and gains from trade associated with those uh, terms of trade. Okay, because look, in our cases, opportunity costs were six for Kenya and four for the EU. So in this situation, we can have three possible cases. If terms of trade are between uh, are between foreign sites, it turns out that welfare goes up in both Kenya and European Union. On the other hand, if terms of uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, of course we should get oops, brackets. If now, if terms of trade. smaller than four, it turns out the welfare goes up only in king. And as you might figure out at the moment, the third possibility in terms of trade above six, welfare goes up in EU alone. So, how is this possible? Okay, let's, let's introduce some new notation and let's just say that like one F from this moment on means one unit of food and uh, one C is one unit of chemicals. Now, let's consider the first case. In the first case, we will consider a train terms of trade uh, that will go like this. There needs to be somewhere between four and six. For simplicity, let's just say uh, they are simply uh, five. So, one unit of chemicals on the international market, so through international trade, can be exchanged for five units of food. Okay, let's go back to the production possibility for years we had. Uh, we had production possibility from here for EU. We could produce 100 units of food and 25 units of chemicals, right? And so this is E. Now, oh. now we can, uh, in case of Kenya, we could produce either 30 units of food or 
units of chemicals. Right? <coughs> Let's just say that both of these countries have chosen A and B as the optimal points. Those we are taking from preferences. At this moment we are not discussing preferences, so the only thing we actually need to have over here is this one. Now, this is still out there. Now, what happens if there's international trade and we can exchange goods within these terms of trade? Okay, so look, we know that the EU has comparative advantage in chemicals. So, what the European Union can do is specialize completely and produce only chemicals. In this case, uh, EU will produce 25 units of chemicals. But those 25 units of chemicals could be exchanged for 125 units of food. So, look, what happens over here is that thanks to international trade, we are obtaining new production possibility frontier. Because now, European Union We are imagining that this is perfect straight line is now able to uh, to have either 125 units of food and every combination in between until 25 units of uh, and 25 units of chemicals and look we can clearly see that each combination like from here to here uh, will be associated with higher welfare for the European Union. So, assuming that EU chooses combination of like B prime, we clearly see that B that B prime would be preferred to uh, to B because here we see that uh, now the country. Uh, the EU is able to have more of both goods. And this is only because EU is able to specialize and trade on the international markets. Now, what is happening at the same time uh, in Kenya? Well, Kenya, uh, Kenya can do the very same thing. Kenya can specialize in a production of food. If Kenya is going to produce 30 units of food, it can exchange it for 6 units of chemicals. Right? One unit of chemical is worth uh, uh, 5 units of food. So, what will happen here is that this old outer production possibility group here pivots around 30 and we are getting over here uh, of course we did this for the uh, graph purposes and look again we see that we can easily choose a point like A prime that will be preferred to the point A because the customers in Kenya will now have more of both goods. Okay, so we clearly see that once we've established a trade between these two countries, both of them can benefit. But of course, let's also see a situation in which only one of the countries benefits. So now let's go to the case number two. So, if in case number two,
terms of trade, they are lower than foreign. So let's again make it very simple. And let's write it like this. Oh, sorry, case two. So now one unit of chemicals on the international market can be exchanged for three units of food. Uh, well, so what happens now? Again, we need to draw the all production possibility frontiers. First for EU, and the second one for uh, Kenya. It was 30, and right? So here we have Kenya. And again, we can choose some point A and some point B as the preferred uh, consumption points. Now, look, in this case, let's start with Kenya. What Kenya can do? Kenya can specialize in the production of uh, in the production uh, uh, in the production of food and can prepare 30 units of food. It can exchange it for now, now for 10 units of chemicals. So look what is happening in Kenya. Kenya, again, its outer key line is pivoting around point of interest in here. And now, as we see, the gains from trade for Kenya are even bigger. You see, the possibilities here are, uh, uh, are way better than the previous case. And you clearly see that this point facilitates uh, better consumption opportunities than the one uh, lying below. Now, what happens in the European Union? Well, here the situation is less, uh, less how to say, uh, positive because the European Union can still produce one, uh, two, uh, 25 chemicals, but it can exchange only for 75 units of food. So, in this situation, uh, the benefit, uh, the beneficiary of international trade is only Kenya. And, look, please try to do on your own situation like this. Uh, figure out some terms of trades and try to see that in the last case, now, the only beneficiary of, uh, uh, of trade will be, uh, will be the European Union. But look, this brings us to an important question. So, what will decide about what are the terms of trade? Look, this is a more complex question that we can actually answer within this framework. But, uh, we will try to answer it uh, a little bit later as we go on with the course. For now, just remember, uh, like the main thing is, when we decide about this term, when the terms of trade are decided, it depends on international demand and international supply. So, uh, depending on the sizes of the country, big countries will have very strong influence of terms of, on terms of trade on international market, while small countries will have only minor impacts on them. Now, the decisions, production decisions, will change those standards of trade and in turn will be, uh, uh, will be influencing uh, gains, welfare gains from trade. Okay, so look, I think uh, this is uh, uh, this is it about uh, about the Ricardo model. Look, what we've learned, we've learned a couple of very important tools that we're going to develop and explore and use a little bit later uh, in more sophisticated models. But we saw going through the assumptions, uh, we've learned how to establish a small model. It can easily explain how 
why countries trade based on their comparative advantage, and what is important, even if they don't have absolute advantage in producing some goods, they can still be the beneficiary of trade. Well, we also learned that that uh, uh, that, uh, that those benefits from trade depends on terms of trade. So how we exchange, uh, so the ratio in which we exchange goods. Okay, so this is it about uh, with the general information about uh, Riccardi Holo. In the next video, I'm going to show you uh, uh, show you two possible extensions of this model and how they uh, change the results. And, uh, and later we will look at some uh, empirics of the comparative advantage model. Okay, so uh, see you in the next video.